our first inductee. Multiple, multiple time feature winner all over the place in the state of Indiana, Illinois. You probably name a state around here in the Midwest, he's probably won something. Three time track champion here at the Brownstown Speedway. He's drove everything you could possibly drive. And he's looking for a milestone here coming up. So let's bring up our first inductee to the 2014 Hall of Fame, Randy Petro. Hit your plaque real fast. Randy, first off, I need to ask you, how does it feel to be inducted into the Brownstown Speedway Hall of Fame? That feels great. Uh, I always say this, you know, I kind of grew up up there in those grandstands. You know, when I, I'm kind of, I'm getting up there in age. You know, I was around here when you couldn't go into pitching when you was a little guy. And uh, we sat about straight up there, right in the middle. You know, James Essex and his family sat beside of us and Paul Crockett's family sat behind us every week. You know, and it's, it's an honor now as a racer you know, to get in the Hall of Fame for sure. Now, let's, uh, people that might not know where you came from, tell us about how you got started in racing and how you got up into it. Well, you know, Dad and Gene, you know, raced all the time, and, and I just, I, I wanted to go as much as I could. I remember there was times my mom wouldn't go to the races for some reason, and I, I'd go to Whitewater and sit in the grandstand by myself about 10 years old just because I wanted to be there. But, you know, just following Dad's footsteps, it's all we've ever known. You know, we didn't, we didn't go on too many vacations. We just went racing. And we was together, you know, three nights a week. And it's really special. Tell us about your first race car. Do you remember it? Oh, yeah. It was about a 74 Camaro. And uh, Willie Slee, which helped me a lot in my younger days. And I haven't forgot that. I try to give it back to him. But it was a 74 Camaro. And uh, we, didn't have a, we didn't have a chop saw. We had a tubing cutter. And I, I worked on that car a little bit, putting the row cage in, because Dad said, you're gonna, if you're going to do it, you're going to learn how to do it. And uh, so I, I cut every piece of that tubing with a tubing cutter, and that's a job. And uh, that, so that spring, Dad bought a chop saw we still use today. So I think he was trying to teach me a lesson. But, you know, obviously the first race was at Twin Cities, and we was fortunate enough to win that night. And uh, Joe Johnson, a lot of people don't know, but, you know, he took me on the first race. I didn't have my license. You know, 16 back then was young, not so much now. But, you know, and, and, and his dad was still into racing heavy. Joe took me the first, you know, few weeks that I, until I got my license. You know, so I owe that to him. And uh, we just got started at Twin Cities. I think I raced my first race here in like 86, my senior year in high school. We was fortunate enough to win the championship, the points. I think it was right down to the wire with Joe, I think, if I wasn't mistaken, and uh, kind of just been doing it ever since. Your favorite memory of racing here at Brownstown Speedway? Uh, probably my dad won in Jackson 100 the last time he won it. Uh, you know, I wasn't racing, but I was sure driving that car. But he'd been up like all night and for two or three days trying to build an engine and, and uh, just watching him, watching him win. You know, I, I'm a fan. I'm a racer, but I'm a fan too, just like all you people up there. And I enjoy watching this as much as I do driving. But I don't know as far as me being here. You know, we got so many great racers that I've raced here. You know, me and Earl was just talking back there. You got Scott and Rick Hines and well, and Jeremy now. And uh, I don't know, Jeff Wilson. We had a, a slew of guys in there that was just tough to beat. But I passed Matt Boatnick to the flag one night. It paid two grand to win 900 for second. And I beat him by about two feet. So that's pretty special. Who, you, who all do you have here watching you get inducted tonight, and who all do you have to thank for your career? Well, I don't know who's all here, to be honest with you. There, <laughs> there's a lot of 95 shirts. Uh, I don't, you, you know, I got to thank my mom and dad and my sisters here tonight, you know, my family, my wife, and uh, my daughter and Dustin and his girlfriend. And, and there's just a lot of people here, that, my cousin Johnny, you know, and I have, I'm getting up there, like I said, y'all have like second, third generation fans, you know, that. Yeah, it's kind of cool, but you know I've been doing it 31 years, and I got one thing to say. We all probably take some things in life for granted. So you take Brownstown Speedway. You know I was lucky enough to watch Hall of Fame National Dirt Track Hall of Fame drivers when I was growing up here at Brownstown, and then you had we've had some of the best announcers, and you're coming right in there, big boy. But you got Essex and, and Michael Despain, and now you. And we got one of the best racetracks in the country to come to. 
I think we take it for granted. It's been it's special. I love standing here. I mean, I've raced a lot of places, but you know, there's no place like being successful at, at, at Brownstown Speedway. It means a lot to me, and this is very special. Hi, right, race fans. Here he is, your first inducting into the 2014 Brownstown Speedway Hall of Fame, Randy Petro. Our second inductee into the 2014 Hall of Fame, multiple, multiple time track champion here at the Brownstown Speedway, who you can still see racing, racing tonight in two divisions. So how about let's give a round of applause to Matt Boatnick. <laughs> Matt, same question posed to you as I posed to Randy. How does it feel to be inducted here into the Brownstown Speedway Hall of Fame? Well, it's a big honor. I really appreciate it, and uh, it, I tell you the truth, it's a huge surprise to me. I can't believe nobody uh, leaked that out, and I didn't think I'd get put in. Did You didn't know anything when you got brought down to the infield? Well, I did then. I tell you the truth, after the heat races, I walked up, and I was sitting with my wife and girls, and uh, I was telling my wife, I said, boy, J.D.'s here tonight in the pits, and Andy Rieger's here, and John and Amanda's here. You know, look, my mom was sitting down there with my wife, and Becky was here, and I'm like, I look at my wife, I said, am I going to put in tonight? And she goes, no, I don't think so. so. I didn't know. So, <laughs> what, what, what went through your mind when you, when you first put two and two together? Well, I, I don't know. I was just uh, surprised. Tell us about your, uh, how you got started into racing. Well, Dad's always raced here. That's what makes this place so special to me. You know, when I was five and six years old, I just love coming to this place to watch. And I still enjoy watching, but I really enjoy racing here. And uh, that's just what I look forward to do every Saturday night as soon as it gets warm out. Remember your first car? Tell us about it. Yeah, I think we called it Tallulah. It took us two years to build it. Um, we, we worked a lot. I feel sorry for uh, my brother, Phil. He had to put up with me and J.D. We'd go out there and we'd work and work. And I had some really stupid ideas. And he'd come out there and he said, no, you can't do it that way. And he, he'd cut it out and change it. And I'd get mad at him. And we went back and forth. And, and he was right about everything. I mean, some of the stuff we were trying to do would never have worked and wasn't very safe. You had to make it safe, though, right? Yeah, that's, that's where Dad would come in. He'd come out there and say, no, we can't do that. He'd, he'd keep us in line. He'd let us pretty much do what we wanted, but he'd always make sure we were good and safe. Any favorite memories of uh, racing against your dad? You know, we've only got to really race hard just a few times. Probably the best, which I was talking about earlier tonight. Um, Dad and uh, JD started up in the front of a modified feature, and I started back in the middle. And I was joking with them before we pulled out. I said, We're going to crash all three cars. <laughs> Coming out of turn two, Dad and JD got together, and I just missed them. We about jumped all three cars right there. But I've had some really good races here. You know, we even had the tie with Brad Barrow. I had a photo finish with uh, uh, Dusty Chapman. And I tell you something, it really means a lot to get inducted on the same night Randy Petro does, because I really look up to him. And I think some of the other people like Terrence and that's getting put in, I really look up to them and I really enjoyed racing against Randy and Earl and those guys. And that makes it so much fun to come out here every week. Your favorite memory of your own career here at Brownstown? I don't know. <laughs> the favorite part's pulling up in victory lane. I mean, I like winning the track championships. I do like point racing. And uh, it's, it's just all about the wins when you come here. That's, that's the most fun. And I do like the big shows. I like to, when we get to race in front of the big crowd and everybody's here. And I know you got a lot of people throughout your career. Anybody here you want to give thanks to as far as who's helped you out? Pretty much everybody in the infield. <laughs> Even if you're wearing green shirts, I'm okay with that. <laughs> no, I got to thank my wife, Heather, both girls, Rhiann and Jenna. I got to thank Scott. Altamar, Scott McCormick, JD, my brother Phil, my dad, Mike King, Tyler Wetzel, John Wetzel, my major sponsor. We might have to bump the sponsorship up a little bit now. But no, there's a whole bunch of people I'm sure I forget a lot. Clay Alt, he's been led in the car. Travis Kern, Brad Irwin did the bodies. I mean, it's just, seems like we have a whole bunch of people behind us. I got Barney, it's always been there, and that's it. If I ever get in a bind, it just seems like an all I can always call. There's probably a dozen people I can call, and they'll all show up and help me. It's great. All right. Congratulations to you, Matt. Once again, a round of applause for your second inductee to the 2014 Hall of Fame, Matt Boatnick.
Our next inductee into the 2014 Brownstown Speedway Hall of Fame has been around here for a while. You've seen him racing in the modified division, and he's pretty much raced everything you could find here. And is also his family racing here at Brownstown as well, especially tonight. His last win was a big modified race here. I believe it was a Jackson 100 weekend where he picked up the feature win. Our next inductee in the 2014 Brownstown Speedway Hall of Fame is John Davis. Come on up here, John. We have to talk to you now. First off, your feelings. How does it feel to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? Well, I'll tell you what. It's, I really appreciate it. And uh, uh, I've, I've raced since 1969 at this racetrack. Not eight, 1869, <laughs> but 1969. I've raced with the grandfathers, the fathers, and the son. So <laughs> you can't hardly get, imagine how many memories I've got of all these years and, and all my friends. I've lost so many good guys that I've, I've been acquainted with over the years of my racing. My utmost feelings for these guys was tremendous. If they couldn't be here tonight in person, they were here in my heart. Do you remember the... Uh Remember your first memories of when you started racing here? Who was your, uh, who was your biggest competitions, and who did you look up to you racing here? When I first started racing, there was several. I mean, we're going to start off here with Ira Baston, Ezra Baston, Russ Petro, uh, Paul Crockett, uh, Gene, Pe Gene, uh, Got Gene Got Dalton, um, Jack Owens. Um, um, let's see who else. Um, Tico Ray, I mean... The guys that I raced against, um, you know, was Don Hobbs. I mean, you, you know, these guys are major players in the activity and sports of auto racing around our, our area. And they've all worn proud hats over the years. Uh, I feel blessed to be inducted into the Hall of Fame uh, for that simple fact. And like I say, I'm not going to just take this with me tonight, but it's given to the rest of them that's not here. And I really love them, appreciate them, and I miss them. Uh, I've got my family that's been supportive. Um, I've been married for 48 years. I've raced for 44 of them. That is a long time for her. <laughs> I've been active as a driver for 44 years. Uh, my grandson's now driving the car, and he made a spectacular show tonight when he rolled off the corner. <laughs> so I hope that everybody enjoys the races tonight. I want to thank all my family, my wife, Linda, that's been with me for 48 years, that's been so instrumental in letting me come to the races. Uh, very few times have I walked out of the house feeling like that I was abandoned ship. She might have thought it, I didn't feel it. Um, I've been selfish for a long, lot of years, and I, now I've got seven granddaughters, two grandson, and two great children. So with all my family here, and my sister and everybody, my friends, Gary Decker and his family that supported me and raced with me for years and years. Um, I cannot ex express a much enjoyment and compassion I have for these people. They're all my family. Mostly all raised people here are my family. I take care of their boys, their grandchildren, whatever it takes to make certain they come back to the track, I'm here. Um, if I've got it, they can use it. So uh, I feel like I've been really fortunate again. And uh, I, I, what else can I say? Anything you want? Well, <laughs> over the years, like I say, I've, I've raced for different promoters here, uh, starting back with Ted Collins and Kenny Woods. Uh, they were great guys. They took care of me, um, breaking into the racing circuit here. Um, I actually run off the racetrack and tore four of their poles down the back when they was just poles back there and hit a cop car. And they was actually going to try to arrest me, but it just didn't happen. So I came back and uh, told Ted and Kenny, and they took care of all the problems for me. So out of all the years I've raced, that's probably most of my memorable times I had as far as racing the car here at track. Uh, the, the Jackson race in... in uh, that I won in 05 was exciting for me. I sat there at 55 years old and won a race. 
uh, good competition, um, was excited. Won very few races in my late model car, even though I tried every week. Uh, my boys have been supportive to me. They've come and helped me, and I know they've had whenever they had other obligations. I, I've just, you know, i have just excited about being inducted in the Hall of Fame and to be a member of this uh, great organization. So, I guess, um, I guess that's all I got to say. All right, race fans, congratulations. Let's give it up for number 27, John Davis. Our next inductee into the 2014 Brownstown Speedway Hall of Fame. He's been around for a few years. A lot of his uh, motors have won races here at Brownstown Speedway. He's won races here at Brownstown Speedway. His family's ran here, his daughter, wife, son, you name it. They've all raced here at Brownstown Speedway. So let's give it up for our next inductee, Terrence Johnson. Well, first off, Terrence, uh, Matt didn't spoil it for you, did he? <laughs> no. You already knew, huh? Uh, well, I was a little suspicious, but it was a pretty big surprise. How'd they, how'd they lead, how'd they, how'd they uh, kind of hint you to come down here? Well, Jason wanted to know if I was going to be here, for which I have only missed a few races since 1971 here. But, uh, and then uh, McKendry, my younger son, asked a question about the Hall of Fame, and uh, so I was real suspicious then. <laughs> and now here you are. How's it feel? Oh, it's great. I'm glad to, re to be inducted in the Hall of Fame. I'm in some real good company. Uh, of course, being here this long, I've raced with about all the great people that have raced here. I remember the first year I raced running uh, a lot of trophy dashes beside Paul Crockett. Uh, of course, I've raced with Ray Godsey and Russ and Don Hobbs and Ira Bast and John Davis, you know, and then the, all the newer ones, you know, uh, Rick Hines and, and you just name it, you know, I've been here for so long, I've raced against about everybody that's raced here. I've ran several classes, and other than the time I ran in Richmond, Kentucky for a, a couple of years, I've been here every Saturday, either racing or watching or helping somebody, and and it's just as almost as much fun to watch the guys I build engines for win as it is to win in my own car. Kind of, kind of makes you feel good knowing that your power, you're, you're helping these guys out, huh? Yeah, yeah, I've built engines for untold amount of people and become good friends and uh, the main thing about the racing deal with me it's like a huge family I've got hundreds of friends and uh, there's all kinds of people I can call on at any time they'll help me with anything uh, I'll help them with anything I mean racing is just a, a huge deal for me I, I just love the race community there's very few people I don't like in racing now obviously a big family deal for you, you mentioned like pretty much everybody in your family has raced before I mean how this family camaraderie, what's it mean to you? Well, there's nothing else like it. I, when uh, Jason wanted to race his first car, he helped build it. Uh, we did everything together. Same way with Jennifer when she raced. We always did everything. They both capable of doing anything on a race car. And, of course, Jason, as far as I'm concerned, is the best setup guy I know. He helps me on my cars. He can watch it, tell, him, tell me exactly what's wrong with it. He, he's just unbelievable on that um, and of course my wife Pam's raced some and and she's doing other things now but she liked it real well and we get to spend a lot of time together if, with working on the race cars you know it's develops a really good relationship when you can work on things together and get along and do different things learn things your favorite memory of racing here your personal favorite memory what has been the the best time for you here Oh, that's hard to say. I guess running the old cars and running side by side with any number of people. Like, you know, like I said, the trophy dashes with Paul Crockett, uh, running with Russ. Uh, we've raced here and other tracks and ran together a lot. And just uh, running side by side for lap after lap and being real competitive is, is just a good memory. That's what it's all about. You know, whether I win or they win, it's still a really good time. That's what it's all about, just being a good sport, competing. Anybody here you have that you want to give thanks to or anybody that might not be here that you want to give thanks to that you haven't uh, mentioned yet? Oh, there's so many people that still help me. Uh, you know, 
besides my family, of course, Pam puts up with me, spend a lot of time with the racing, and Jason still helps me a lot. And, uh, of course, Jim Pfeiffer, uh, we work together on things. And uh, Bob Brewer, we've been good friends for 35 years, just work on all kinds of race things together. And lots of other people. There's just too many to mention. I've got so many good friends in racing. So that's the best thing to have is friends, not enemies, right? Right. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right, race fans, your next inductee to the 2014 Hall of Fame is Terrence Johnson. I'm going to hand it over to Mike Patton. A lot of you know uh, the names Terrence Johnson, Dennis Boatnick, Paul Crockett, Jim Curry. You all won't know those names because they're familiar to you and you've cheered for them or you've booed them or whatever it was that uh, brought you to the track week by week. But what brought me to the track week by week growing up was my dad. And my dad worked on Jim Curry's race car many nights, many days, many weekends. Many trips to Hobstock, Brownstown, Vernon, Princeton, Putmanville. And as a kid, we grew up Jim Curry. My dad's got about 40 years invested in this track. He wants to be buried right there on the front stretch. Ashes put there. That's how much uh, he believes in this dirt track racing and what it's meant to him. So it's kind of uh, appropriate that sometimes we don't know who's behind the scenes making these cars go around. I'm glad to be able to have Jim come up here and talk about my dad, who's going to be inducted tonight. Jim Curry. Yeah, you got a whole two of these? <laughs> well, you know, all these race car drivers that think it's all driver, uh, they better think about the people that help them. Without the good people behind you, you just don't accomplish what you really want to do. And I'm honored tonight to introduce to you Phil Patton. He helped me build my first race car and was in on about every race we ever went to till he got to where he couldn't go. And he was the level-headed thinker in the crowd. When we all get excited, Phil calms down. He come a long way from his beginnings, the first race car I've ever built. Phil put the hot water on the starter. And I was leading the feature coming on number four down here, and it, died and spun in the infield. And you never had to worry from that day on about Phil putting something on it wasn't tight enough. I don't know what to say. Well, you can say something. <laughs> well, I can tell you one thing. If I'd have never hooked up with Jim Curry, I'd never been in Victory Lane, and I've been there a number of times. About 30 years of Saturday nights, and I don't know how many times he won, but a lot of them. And uh, met a lot of nice people. Still running around here. My kids grew up here. And I love dirt track racing because of nice, clean sport. Something you could bring your family to. And just a wonderful thing and I thank GM for allowing me to work on his race car all those nights uh, and taking me to places that we've we've went to and won races wonderful thank you Jim thank you Phil it takes a lot of help to do what I had to do you know, when, when you race for 37 years, 
you evidently like it or just can't give it up or something. But it's a pleasure to have Phil in the Brownstown Hall of Fame. I just like to, Russ, did you get one in black? <laughs> I'd just like to have one of them plaques they're getting today, wouldn't you? <laughs> Are we done? Who gets this? Once again, Grease fans, let's give a round of applause to Phil Patton. Late models, need you to staging.